Good morning. Welcome to Social Coffee Time. I'm Janity Johnson and hope you have your coffee or beverage of choice. I do not uh, condone the coffee, even though I like the coffee. <laughs> Uh, welcome. Uh, I have, we are doing this show, Social Coffee Time, every two weeks. So meaning uh, it will always be the second and fourth Thursday of the month. And obviously with social media, there will be a lot of news. My goal is to cover some of the latest uh, trends and things that are happening out there. Uh, I mainly focus on Facebook and Instagram and then also walking through a case study. So something that has happened lately that you uh, that I have worked with in with my clients and just want to bring that to you. So I bring a case study today. I'm going to be talking about at the end of this, after I run through some of the news tips, I'm going to be talking about some of the the coaches that I've worked with and just what to expect when you're a coach with Facebook advertising. Uh, there's some things in your head that might not um, be true on the cost of the ad. So I will be talking about that. Uh, we have some Instagram updates with Facebook updates, one small Pinterest update, and I'm going to run through that now. First off, if you are here, even watching the replay, I would love you to comment below with where you are from and also what your business is. So just put in there uh, city or state and then what you do for your business. I always love to find out and hear what the businesses are that are listening and watching and learning. So then maybe I can gear my content and help gear it towards your type of business better. All right. Well, let's get started. OK, so first up, Instagram TV, TV IGTV. If you are using IGTV, put in the comments below IGTV. I'm curious because uh, it's new. It is something that is on your phone. If you download a separate app, it's also on your Instagram app, but it is on both. So if you look at uh, IGTV, here's what it looks like. I'm logging in. And as you can see, there it is. And there's somebody on there. And if I go to my actual channel, it opens it up and then it will show my last videos and the last videos I just did of my cats and it was kind of uh, just a relaxing morning showing my morning routine the interesting thing is to me and I'd love to hear other opinions on this I'm not getting a whole lot of viewership on these compared to Instagram stories by far much much different uh, the one the one from yesterday has two views on it two uh, one I did a couple weeks ago. Now, granted, these last, they last like YouTube, so they're longevity and people can go back and look, watch a whole bunch of them. So you want to have a plan in place with IGTV. But I'm finding the viewership isn't anything like uh, YouTube or even LinkedIn or Facebook or anything like that. So it's interesting what will uh, come of it, but that's just what I've noticed. Hello, RJ. Welcome, welcome. And let's get into the latest article. I'm going to have the links to all of these. I have a ton of links. Uh, I will post all of these links on my page after the call, right after I'm done. But there is a social media examiner by my friend Jen Herman. She does a great job with the Instagram teaching. And she goes through what marketers need to know with IGTV. And she breaks down how to set up your IGTV channel and how to use it best. So I definitely would check out that resource. And then another resource that's great is Instagram itself has created an Instagram creator's handbook. And that is uh, specifically for IGTV. So go through that too. I've, I've briefed through it. It's uh, really not difficult at all to use IGTV. It's just the, it's longer videos than the stories. And you can go up to 10 minutes. If you're a brand or verified, then you can go over the 10 minutes on up to, I believe, 30 plus even minutes. So something to look at testing, trying it out. Um, so far, I'm not sure, but I wasn't sure with Facebook stories in the beginning and a lot of people weren't and that did eventually take off. 
And the next thing that Instagram did is they now on stories add the added the question sticker. And that's a new way to poll your friends. So the question sticker, uh, they have an example here of waiting for the bus. Ask me questions. And it's just very, very simple, basic. But it's just instead of just a poll, it's more open ended. I think what it, Instagram's really trying to do there is really focus on getting that engagement on the stories and getting the engagement on their on the feed. They are all about engagement because that's kind of the the analytics number that we look at even as a reporting with an agency. It's all about engagement on Instagram. So that just brings it to another level of engagement. So I have an article here that explains that too. And I will put that in the comments. All right, so those are some of the things at this point. Definitely experiment with, with IGTV. Okay, you are experimenting with IGTV. Okay, good to know. Uh, I have been too. I, I, you know, it's one of those things that you just, you got to test it. You got to see if it's worked for you and your brand. If uh, the thing that I find with adding IGTV into the world of video is that now we have IGTV. We have Instagram stories. We have Facebook stories. We have regular video. We have Facebook Live. We have the LinkedIn. We have YouTube. They all all take video too. So there's just so many places that I really feel like you need to look at your business, where your audience is, and what will work for you. And yeah, testing it out and seeing if it, if it gets the results that you want, then continue using it. And with IGTV being it's so new, it might not happen right away. All right, so IGTV, that's uh, that's it for Instagram. Uh, so they had a couple changes recently and Instagram is growing tremendously. Uh, today in my private community, we're actually doing a deeper Instagram training that goes into the basics of how to use Instagram because it is very important. Facebook owns it, they've been taking and getting a lot of growth lately and a lot of results because Facebook has really driven uh, the ads and the traffic and they're just improving tremendously. All right, so enough of Instagram. Now on to Pinterest, small, little, little, uh, just very small. Pinterest is adding a way for users to collaborate on boards. What does this mean? Uh, they're just really trying to bring in, further tap its popularity as a place to plan events. This time adding ways for users to collaborate across boards that are baked directly into the app. So that makes sense. Um, group boards will have their own designated feed where users will be able to communicate with others collaborating on that board and also get updates on the new member additions or added pins. So it's just another way that they're, they're getting out there to do better collaboration. So Pinterest had that small change. Now to Facebook. So Facebook, um, they launched a new video marketing tool. Uh, they are really, really uh, pushing video and it's no new news uh, if you haven't realized that. But here's what it says. In an effort to help brands and businesses on Facebook connect, partner up and make deals with creative content producers, the service is launching a tool called brand collabs. The tool is currently avail only available in the US, but it is expected to roll out further soon. It allows brands to search for creators on the service, even digging down to creatives who are already fans of the brand in question and makes it really easy for them to reach out and connect. So this is taking influencer marketing to another level, it's an influencer tool basically for brands to find the people that they want to collab with. That's pretty cool. I have not tried it or tested it out, but I think that is neat. And there's a lot of services out there to find these collaborations or you try to do it manually. And that's pretty cool that they're taking that to the next level. So be interesting to see how that goes. All right. And I got a few things on uh, Facebook. Let's see, what's my next thing? 
Oh, okay. So a new level of transparency for ads and pages. So what this is, is now you can see what the active ads are on every page. Being a marketer, it's pretty cool for me because now I can go spy, if that's the word for it. I can go watch and see what other companies are doing. So especially companies that I know, businesses that I know that are very good with Facebook ads, I can go look at what they're doing and mirror some of the things that they're doing. So that's pretty cool too. You can go see uh, what your competition is doing for ads. Um, it's a good and a bad thing. You know, in some ways, like, do I want my business being copied or, you know, looked at that in that way? Uh, this is why they want to be more transparent is why they did that. Um, but as a marketer, I think there's a great ways to use that to your benefit. So that's the other thing. So check that out on the pages. It's uh, you can view active ads. You can see that running on the pages and you can see the ads running on each page. Let's see, I think I have two more things. Okay, so Facebook is testing a new feature to allow people who don't wish to be identified by their real persona to have secret profiles in groups. This was an update by Mari Smith and uh, weird to me. I mean, very odd. I don't know, That's Mari's awesome. I'm not saying she is. <laughs> I'm saying that the whole secret profile thing is very, very weird to me, but I guess maybe some people just don't want to be themselves in a group and now they're really trying to build groups for communities. So maybe the secret profile thing is a way so people can protect their identity. I don't know. I'm not sure exactly. Um, that's, that's different. And I haven't seen how that will work in the future. Um, personally, I think we need to be transparent, be open when we're especially running a group in a community. So kind of interesting. And last thing, and then I saw somebody commented, I will come back. Last thing is community boost. Facebook is now going for free to different cities. So if you go to facebook.com um, community boost, just you can find it uh, by Googling it easily. Go see if they're coming to your town. If you're in Minneapolis, where I am, uh, they are actually going to be here July 18th, and I will be attending. I went last time. Actually, Mari Smith was hired by Facebook, I believe it was three years ago when they toured, and I did attend, and it was quite good information. Um, very, very informative. You get to talk to the Facebook people directly, so it's very, very cool. It's two days, and they're going to teach a lot about Instagram and Facebook, there's some basic trainings and there are some deeper trainings too. So check it out. And if you are in Minneapolis, let me know. Uh, we are going to be setting up a happy hour meetup after the first day on the 18th. So I'm looking forward to that and looking forward to attending the Facebook boost. It's, it's free. So it's something that I go, well, why not? Why not go attend? Why not? You know, join some other people, some peers in my industry and learn. I mean, learn directly from the source. Kind of cool. All right. So do, do, do. They shouldn't do that. <laughs> I know. I agree. They shouldn't do it. I think that's weird. And maybe it won't go through. I think it's a little odd. I think it's a little odd. Okay. So I want to finish up by talking about a case study that it's kind of a case study. It's just something that I've been running into a lot with running and managing Facebook advertising with clients. So if you don't know the side of my business, uh, that's one of my main focuses in my business when I work with people is Facebook advertising. Uh, we do a lot with clients to do full management. And then we also do a lot with clients to help them get their ads set up and then work along the way to, to make sure it's working. And then um, I also train, uh, if you wanna do it yourself, we have that too. So I work a lot with Facebook ads and I work a lot with coaches and those type of businesses, I wanna talk about the coaches to convert to a sale that is a larger sale, even a service, um, even a law firm. Uh, I'm working with all those types of clients right now. It is not something that you are going to have a true conversion on for $5, $10. I 
I mean, if you want to get video viewers or um, convert to an email list, potentially that could be five to ten dollars, three dollars. You know, once you get good at it and you can scale it, you can get the cost down. Video viewers, for instance, you're just looking at the brand awareness and engagement, getting the click throughs. You can get that for a very, very low cost, maybe, you know, 30 cents, 50 cents, dollar 20. I mean, it's it's hard to get under that dollar mark at the, for a, something that's conversion other than watching a video view, and creating a video view. That's that's pretty inexpensive. But for a coach or a service, I think um, when I talk to a lot of potential clients or clients, they, they feel that it's going to be pretty, pretty low cost. And it is a low cost when you look at things accordingly. When you look at it from a perspective of if I put in $5 and I can make $10 or $15, isn't that a good business model? It is. It is. I mean, you would do that all day long if you knew, you, wouldn't you go gamble? I mean, you know, if you knew you could put in the slot machine $5 or $10 and you can get out double that, you would be spending all your time at a casino. I would. I mean, if you were guaranteed that. Now, is guarantee gonna, going to happen? Absolutely not. But the thing is, leads for coaches are typically anywhere from 50 to 100 plus dollars per lead. And I broke this down for a few coaches before and how it works. And we, when you convert that, it doesn't mean that that's a sale, that's a lead. But let's just say a lot of these coaches that I work with, they have maybe a $3,500 program, $2,500 program. Uh, usually it's in the thousands of dollars. So if you can convert that $100 and let's just make our, our life a little easier with the numbers. Let's say $100 is per lead. So you talk to somebody and we're with most coaches. The goal is to get them on a phone, create a strategy call or discovery call, that kind of thing. Even um, with lawyers to get them to come to the office to have a complimentary consultation. But if you look at this at one hundred dollars a lead, let's say it takes one hundred dollars and you can only close one out of ten of those. And typically it's more than that, but I'm really, really, really lowballing this. So one out of 10, and that would be then a thousand dollars that you spent. But with that $1,000, you can convert that to even two, let's just say it's a $2,000 program, $2,000 course that you're offering or $2,000 coaching session or service or whatever that may be. If you're converting to that, it still makes sense. So you want to focus on knowing that it's not going to take five, 10, $20. I can spend a hundred dollars and convert to a $20,000 product. I work with, um, uh, contractors too. So the general contractor business, their typical clients, 20, $30,000. I mean, if you spent a thousand dollars to get 20, $30,000, wouldn't you be happy? And this is something that I have been talking to every client with lately and just the conversion and the ROI, the return on investment. That's what I want you to focus on in your business when you're running Facebook advertising and really, really think about what is that return on investment. And it is hard. If you're under a $30 product, it can be difficult to get that return on investment, especially if you're hiring somebody too. So you want to think about, okay, how can I get that dollar figure up a little bit higher? So those are the things I've been working on with a lot of uh, my clients. And once we get it rolling, it, they do see success. It's just, it take, can take some time and it takes some testing. And I do a lot with the Facebook ads. So that's, Kinda, let's see. Okay, brand awareness to increase your audience goal. Yes, and that's another thing. I'm gonna put that up there. Yes, I agree. That is one thing. The brand awareness can increase that pool that you're talking about. And so I always suggest video as a top of funnel. We could do that on a whole nother call. Uh, but bottom line is the top of funnel is, so you have a funnel and it goes down like this. And so to create that top of funnel pool that 
Philip Bay is talking about. Philip, I think it's Philip. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. And that brand awareness, I do that a lot with video. I suggest to my clients do that with video. Create those video views, get the video viewership, video engagement. And then after that fact, create the video viewer audience and put the ad for conversion to get them into your law office or on a coaching call, strategy call. That is how you do that at the bottom of funnel. Yes, very, very good point. Very good point. If I can make is there any consistency? There's a way to get fifty get away with 50 bucks. Okay, hold on. Let me see. I'm gonna show this one. Yep. Okay. Is there a way to, that you can get away with 50 bucks? Are you talking about for a if you're talking about for a conversion? Yes, there is. Uh, but I always tell people when I work with them in the beginning that there is a testing phase. So you need to test to see what what works the best. So if it's uh, we test the we tend to test a lot of graphics and videos for our conversion ads, and then we will test the copy too. Uh, the number one thing um, I believe is gra that attention grabbing graphic, and then also the audiences. So making sure that you're hitting that right audience because if you're not talking to the right audience, then you're gonna, going to pay more. So once you know which is working, then you can start scaling it and you potentially can get down to the $50. Um, I have a mortgage. I worked a long time with a mortgage fella, a friend of mine, and uh, we were doing conversion. The typical with the mortgage industry is around $50 to $100, okay? But uh, we were able to scale that and we were able to, we did a lead ad with that. So I don't want to get complicated here, but it was specifically a lead ad. And we started a little bit higher, but we were able to scale it and bring that down to $20 per conversion. So per lead that they spoke to. So I'm not saying that the price has to be that high, but I just want to have people, I'm setting the expectations right and properly. Can you bring it down? Yes, if you know what you're doing. Absolutely, you can. Uh, but the typical still can be $50, $100 um, and more. And the price with Facebook ads is going up. So it's not as low as it used to be where you could get away with $10, $15, $20 for a really, really nice lead. It just, the prices have gone up more and it's gotten more complicated too. Try about a 20 leads a month because of consistency and mix of ads. Awesome. Okay, Anthony, we drive about 120 leads a month. Yep, because of consistency and the con consistent mix of ads. Exactly, exactly. And you're on top of it. See, that's the thing. If Anthony, you're probably staying on top of it. You're changing things out. You know what you're doing. That's how you can get the cost down and get those 120 leads a month. Yeah. Exactly. What is that business, Anthony? I'm curious on that. What is the business? I know I'm um, I'm a little lagging in time, so it will take a second for him to answer me, but I am curious, what is the business? I'll have a sip of my coffee while I'm waiting for that. If he saw it. Otherwise, yeah, I just wanted to give a little lesson on um, just talking about Facebook ads that and the expectations of what you're going to pay for the Facebook ads. And if you don't do the testing, I have the feeling Anthony's done a lot of, yeah, real estate. Okay, real estate. Yep, real estate's a great, great lead gen with Facebook advertising. Awesome, that's good to know. And I've dealt with, I have not done real estate, but I have uh, worked a lot with mortgage, which is very similar, but yeah. Okay, well, we are good to go. Hopefully you guys got something out of this today. We talked deeply about Facebook ads. I really always want to bring some sort of uh, real world examples because I deal with things day in, day out. Um, my main focus of my business is probably Facebook and Instagram and I really um, love video marketing. Video is so huge. You need to embrace video in your marketing. And then um, any of those updates, if they help you out, I will definitely post in the comments 
all the links to this after we are done. And once again, if you are in the area in Minneapolis, definitely say hi, come join us for the happy hour and come join us for the Facebook boost. I'm not doing my normal social media meetup this month because instead we're going to be attending that. All right, thanks you guys for your time and I will see you in two weeks on the next social coffee time. Have a good one.